This podcast is part of the Gun and Geek Network. The opinions expressed may not represent other podcasts or affiliates of Gun and Geek. Check out more podcasts at gunandgeek.com and get ready because geekiness starts in 3, 2, 1. Welcome to Voices of Defiance. It's a podcast about sci-fi's television show Defiance and all of its universes to include, but not limited to, the video game. We're not experts, just a few fans like yourself that love the show and want to geek out about it. If you haven't caught up to the latest aired episode, you might want to pause right now and go catch up since there will be spoilers. You have been warned. And now, let's have some fun and get on with the podcast. Hello and happy Arcfall Day! I'm your host of Voices Defiance, Stargate Pioneer, coming at you today from Antarctica, where I am happily vacationing. And with me is the woman with the memes. Her name is Shannon. Hello. Although I'm not the queen. No, you're, so. you're, you, you're well, a woman you, with memes. <laughs> you can be the queen memer. Okay. Okay. I and, like this title. And also joining us today is, you've already heard his name, he is the infinitely quotable Mr. Sean. What's up? We'll be talking today on Season 3, Episode 5, History Rhymes. Just a reminder, you can catch us at VoicesOfDefiance.com. Go to our contact page and find all the great ways to reach us, including our voicemail line, 612-888-ARC1 or 612-888-2751. And it is still active, I checked. But there are no voicemails. Hit us with voicemails, people. Hit us. Hit you. Hit you. Okay. <laughs> Just want to say thank you again to Nicole Munoz for spending some time with us last week. That was rocking. Even though she's dead. Well, no. Christy's dead. Nicole is yeah, alive exactly. and fine. <laughs> Christy lasted well, 15 seconds. As, <laughs> in the Nicole's season. alive and well. Nicole is fine. So, you know, we're going to see her in dream sequences. We saw some dream sequences this week. It's it's possible. It's going to happen. I see it happening, especially with how screwed up Alec is. Maybe when he calms down and quit getting his butt kicked. He did quit getting his butt kicked, and he proved two things. One, he does have a spine in there somewhere. He is a tar because he put the knife to Mama's throat and he got the crazed look in his eyes. So he's he's got that. Also, he proved that Romtox people, uh, you're stupid. completely safe as long as you're in a vehicle. <laughs> Because they cannot, from 15 feet with a submachine gun, they cannot still cannot take out a driver. So, just get in cars. They, people of Defiance, that's get why, in cars. That's why they need all the dead people on the side of their, uh, their you know, they're tying them, they're cutting the heads off and tying them to the side. It's to look, because they can't do anything. They want the fear it's of just, intimidation. Yeah, you take just out a get tire, maybe. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Shoot low. I, a I don't know. tank. I have no idea. Just to disable the vehicle somehow. They they cannot do. I mean, there's there's the butcher of Tulsa there, and he can't even get his people <laughs> to shoot a car. Well, he can't even take out Alec. He went one on one on Alec, this untrained little boy, right? And he can't. Last season was throwing. Was it the first? Was his last season? Or the first season when he threw up when just putting a charge blade in Skeever. Yeah, but that was last season. Remember I don't that? know. His wife had to defend him from Hellbug. So I know. I, so, I mean, he's grown a pair this time. Yeah. Killed a dude. Good for him. Good for Alec. They're going to have to go back and take care of Romtok because they got to get Daytac's charge blade back. You know, that's the whole thing. Daytac with the charge blade defiance is back <laughs> well, to normal. Now that Alec's back and they don't have to be afraid of anymore, now they're going to have a whole other set of problems now that he's back. But. As we Rom saw Talk's in the previews, be one of them. but we'll get there later. In the meantime, I want to start out. I found some ratings on Defiance. They're few, few and hard to come by this year. <laughs> and well, but they are there. We got live plus seven ratings from the season premiere. I told you to take three weeks. It's three weeks later. We got them. So this is from June 12. It was the fourth highest percent increase of all shows. It was beat out by Orphan Black at 216%. It was beat out by Royal Pains. What? That's a USA show, who, right? Who watches that? I guess 114% of their viewership is Live Plus 7. Guess. And get this, the number three. Are you seeing this in the show notes? The Team Mom special at 95%. Oh, my God. Oh, come on. Oh my what God. the hell? I didn't even know. That beat out Defiance? Yeah, 95%. So, so we're going to say those three don't count, and Defiance made number one. <laughs> Defiance is at 87%. It got a total Live Plus 7 of 2.074 
million. And it was yeah. overall for all the shows that week, it was 17th and it was beat out at number 16th by Dark Matter at 2,084,000. And it had a 63% increase. So Defiance obviously beat the Live Plus 7% increase. So we got. Now, I, I thought they were going by Live Plus 3 now. Well, I couldn't find any Live Plus 3 ratings. If you can find Live Plus 3 ratings, go ahead and we'll talk about those. But the only ratings I found were Live Plus 7 from well, three weeks ago. That's still good, though. That's still, that's still good. It's still for a season opening for the, I mean, cause June 12th is when they, is when it came back. So that is good. And I know that the ratings have gone a little bit higher that since then, if you, if you use the, the live three, because I have seen the live three. I just don't know where I found them. Well, as long as the percent increase maintains in the top 25, we will see the total overall live plus seven ratings. But if it drops, we won't see it at all. So that's just how it's rolling. So this week it, we watched history rhymes. So three weeks later, We've gone through the premiere, which was episodes one and two. We've gone through the next two weeks, which is episodes two and three, so or three and four. So we're at episode five, History Rhymes. It was written by Unpam Nigam. I have no idea if I got that name right, and but he is a defined writer. Yeah, probably not. Uh, you go to the art clamor, you'll see that Stargate Pioneer can never get a name right. He is. He, he a, also did, he also did Psych, right? Yep, he's a avid. Defiance producer and writer also did Psych, and then it was def it was directed by Felix Alcala, who is very experienced. He even has some BSG cred. So we got some <laughs> some BS. <laughs> Quit hissing. It was the webisodes. Come on, you like the webisodes? <laughs> oh, whatever. You enjoyed that for years. <laughs> years, sir. Years. I did. I got burned out. I got burned out. I mean, decades if you want to count the original. Yeah, I was a huge uh, Battlestar fan for a very long time. And then, uh, you know, I, I think I just got overexposed, just a little overstimulated with it. And then during the middle of it, the writer strike happened and just kind of ruined all the characters for me. The writer uh, strike did a lot of ruining for a lot of shows that, that year. Um, it, it did not go well. It did, what was the one you watched with, uh, what's her name? Uh, Army Wives. Yeah. With Kath oh, my God. That was horrible. Catherine Bell. Horrible. They ruined my character, girl. <laughs> Have you guys watched The Astronaut Wives at all this year? The what? I have not. It's a new series called The Astronaut Wives. It's on. It's a summer show, and I have not had a chance. To, I think it's on CBS, but I'm not sure. That that seems like it was going Astronaut to be. Astronaut Wives. Uh, yeah, it seems. Picture this. This is the the gist. I, I caught about 15 minutes of one. This is the gist I got. Um, Real Housewives of wherever the hell they are in the 60s meets. Like that, um, what was the, the show they did recently that they, they were going to make it a show, but they made it a miniseries instead Ascension, of Ascension. Ascension. Which yeah. did not do well. Yeah. I think it's Real Housewives of Wherever Meets Ascension. That's kind of, kind of the vibe I got. Ascension had an outstanding first 30 minutes and outstanding <laughs> last 30 minutes. You take out those Everything in between. five hours in between and you're fine. And it would have been spectacular. SP <laughs> 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 and I were slogging through that going, God, did you see the fourth one? Yeah, I, I saw it. I, I, didn't, it didn't, even, do I didn't even finish it. <laughs> we were just desperately trying to get to the end. And at the end, we're like, yes! I didn't even finish it. I got. And I think I watched it. the end of the second one. And I'm like, yeah, well, okay. Let's just go ahead and delete it. Okay, so I was thinking about this on my drive to Antarctica. So who would win in a fight? Jamie Murray or Trisha Health? Hmm. Are you talking Stama or Six or Jamie Murray or Trisha Helfer? Well... Stama or Six or Stama or that whoever she played in Ascension, it doesn't matter. She plays the same character, just one's a robot, one's not. So let's go Six. Stama and Six. I think Six would win. Six would kick the... She is a battle... She's basically, a she's a, she's a all, Cylon all right. who is specifically not crafted even really a to be a fighter. There, yeah. And you're making me, you're making me speak against my girl there. Even so the I'm, Cylon, what? Wow, sixes are badasses. I mean, they, <laughs> they, the Cylon were afraid of the, the sixes. threes. Loved her. All right, whoever she played in Ascension, that woman in Stomp. Oh, Stama would just Stama. eat her. Really? For lunch. Because oh. they're they're both conniving. They're both no, manipulative. It, that is true. However, Stama. Has see, I don't think the the chicken ascension six or uh, Trisha Helfer in ascension had that gear in her where she would just club somebody to death or poison them with with whatever or take the necessary steps to ensure survival. She was a conniver and a backstabber. Stama is a survivor and a strategist. Stama would eat her for breakfast and then poison her. I think the the 
Trisha Helfa character, I somebody in the chat room knows her name. I can't remember the from Ascension, the character that she played. She was a survivor. I mean, you had to. Sur- it's the same sort of. She wasn't the same type of survivor as Stama. Stama threw people off the airlock to survive. Well, I basically so does Trisha Helfer's character in Ascension. Uh, yeah, 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 I. I will give you that there is a great number of similarities. I just think if you cage match the two of them, Stama's coming out with Trisha Helfer's head in a bag, probably. Ooh. No, that's Alec that takes the head in the bag. Yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> she's just going to be lump. She'll be a lump on the mat because she's been poisoned. All right. Or eaten. All right. So, history rhymes. What'd you guys think? Good, I bad. There's so much of Jamie's skin in this episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, she want? had something on in the need want. She actually had clothing on. Okay, let me just say this. I don't understand this. You go from making out in the bird's nest, which is what I call his lair. Shannon made me freeze frame that, and she's like, it's a it's bird's, a nest. bird's nest. To the whole town is freaking out because she's with this gigantic purple people eater, the Omec, and everyone should be scared of. And here she is flaunting her new boyfriend, and she takes him to the need want. I don't understand it. She's in the bird nest, and then she sacks him, and they need one. I don't. I'm, Look, this is very wanting. simple. This, this is a lifelong. Look what I've done. <laughs> a, a lifelong mystery that has been solved. We've been asking this question since 1990, whatever, when Jurassic Park came out. Where did Velociraptors go? They turned into Omac. And and that's she, what it is. They got their little bird nest. Her new They're voice. super lethal. Did you They're even like, see <laughs> Jurassic World? <laughs> They're hunt. Look. They hunt in packs. Did you see Jurassic World? I did. Okay. So no spoilers, but your statement there is kind of false. No, it's true. That's what happened to the Velociraptors. You're saying the purple ones became the Velociraptors. Yeah, see, they split into two distinct I don't know. Stamba's pretty much a raptor sometimes. You know? <laughs> yeah, but she's a white raptor. And those are those are different. Different, <laughs> different genotype. Purple, the new white meat. Yeah. Purple Omec penis. Oh my god, the lines they take had in this episode were killer. They were awesome. <laughs> they must, were awesome. He must have had fun filming that one scene when he's bouncing bear up and down, <laughs> just talking bad about his wife the whole time. It was funny. I had a whole Mary Poppins slash Stama moment there. Are you quite finished? <laughs> Making his fingers smell like my wife. <laughs> oh my god, that that should be on a shirt. <laughs> That should be on a shirt. Oh, the two of them. And she's like, but I love you. What was it he said? You, you know, Grandma Sudama <laughs> likes to do purple enchanter penis. <laughs> <laughs> Are you quite finished? Oh, they're definitely having fun this episode. It- I would suggest to you that there's a significant part of just purple. Uh, there's a significant portion of the population Try and get that sentence out without not trying to say purple. Um, that would enjoy a purple enchanter penis. In fact, that should be something that we give to Adam and Eve as their next thing. You know, because like when Avatar came out, they had the blue fleshlight. They could totally do purple, <laughs> purple enchanter penis and <laughs> make millions off of it. Millions, I'm telling you. Well, just I just think the lines were awesome. Genius, genius. <laughs> Just He's get a hold of your flowers co- at her. She's ducking and she's like, oh, being submissive and brushing her hair. Well, is there something deeper going on? What do you mean by that? What do you think he means by that? How deep did he go? That's what he meant. <laughs> so Davo the Geek in the chat answers my question David. about Ascension. And he says her name, Trisha Helfer's name, was Viandra Denninger. So is he Stama? This sounds better. Stama Viandra? I don't know. Viandra was. Uh, Viandra is a sexy name. Yeah, very much so. Well, she was the head of basically the Ascension version of the Need Want. So. Oh, and look, he, he also says he likes Catherine from Jack. David, I love you more. <laughs> Everybody liked Catherine Bell. <sighs> Catherine. That girl had stems. And, uh, Catherine. So. Jen is, Jen is just in, in like, just thinking now, like, she's like, <sighs> Do you Ka- remember Ka- how many? Shannon went very fangirl. All Catherine. right. So, Catherine Bell or Amanda Tapping? Shannon's head just exploded. <laughs> Why are you torturing me? <laughs> These are the girls. Why are you torturing me? Because um, I want to know. Bell or Amanda tapping? I think Amanda. Amanda for, what? for sure. Like you prefer Amanda or you would know, rather have Amanda's, he, Amanda's he legs finished. wrapped around you? <laughs> he never finished the question. <laughs> <laughs> Them for what? I don't know. Just one or the other. Which one would you want? Like, She'd probably rather have Catherine's legs over her shoulders, but hang out with Amanda Tapping. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Is that not true? 
I don't know. I don't. <laughs> it's true. Just trust me on that. <laughs> what combination did you say? I said Catherine's legs over your shoulder and hang out with Amanda. Okay, it could be sick. That's not sick. That's the truth. You can't <laughs> handle the truth. Yeah. I can't. I can't, I can't handle because I can't decide. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we get to see Nolan has a sister and her name was Rebecca. And we also know that Nolan's parents were vaporized. So now we know why Nolan is so screwed up if we didn't know before. And now you know what Nolan's mean. What it means to be a Nolan, you live or, or die together. Yeah, I, I think I was dead on. Like Nolan is great to have in battle. It's when you get him out of battle that it's it's very bad for everybody. And he was not a great dad. He tried his best, and he did prepare her with the lessons that they really needed in in the world. Because you can't be a nice person and live in that world. I, I don't think you can be like one of those pacifist type people no longer a suburban dad um but at the same time that's a little girl and he trained her the only way he knew to train her which is how you train a soldier well he's a soldier so and it was it it was not one of those you know father of the year moments when he's like hey kill the kill your first man at the age of 10 or 12 or whatever he didn't even realize how much he messed her up no i mean he realizes now looking back at it and you know she was going to kill him. You know, it's and then snuggled whole, up in the crook of his legs like a cat. That's a whole turning moment. Yeah. She's I, a cat. <laughs> she's yeah, she's kind of a cat. But uh, there's there's nothing that really linked the two. I mean, you always wondered how that happened growing up and everything and how she became who she is. Well, now you know and it it isn't such a great thing. She has issues. So that, does he. That was such a messed up scene in the shaming rack in that t- when they were using him as a dart, as a dartboard. Yeah, no one just goes up and kills she him. She was horrified. I know, but I mean, I think Nolan, you know, in retrospect, I think Nolan killed him for a reason. I think he didn't want to see him up there suffering anymore. Oh, I think it I was. I don't think so. I think it was him because he had a lot of anger issues. His planet had been invaded. Everybody he knew basically was killed. His entire way of life, his entire home planet was for all intents and purposes gone and no in no way for it to come back. Man, that was such and a disturbing scene. That'll mess you up. It'll mess you up and and you're going to do things that perhaps on reflection you regret because you need that time to adjust and heal and different people heal in different ways. When you're a warrior, I'm guessing <clears throat> You take it out on the thing that you blame. And I'm not saying he was right and he didn't, you know, that he should have, I don't know, gone a different way on that. Uh, but to have your 10 year old. Cinder coloring. Yeah. While you're throwing darts at it. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean. That's a bit damaging. Yeah. A little. <laughs> she has no memory of it, though. She does now. Yeah, true. Well, it was in there. It was in there. It was in Nolan's head, which is why she saw it. So I, and she probably just blocked it out. You know, just because kids are resilient that way, they'll just kind of forget things that become too traumatic or that are too traumatic. So there's a lot of that that I'm guessing just was disconnected from her. And it's it shows you what Earth was like before all of this kind of thing happened and how people adjusted and how people had to live. And it wasn't pretty at all. Right. And at the end, Arissa was going to have a happy ending. She was going to take the land coach. She was going to go out to California or whatever they call it, Arc LA or whatever they call it, and meet <laughs> up with Kenya Clone, and they were going to live happily ever after. But no, you will screwed it up, and they have to live together within a mile of each other. What was that movie from the 80s that they had? Deadlock. Well, Deadlock. Well, it's a- they also did on Star Trek. They wore the collars and they couldn't. They couldn't go too far apart. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Deadlock. They also did that in Star Trek. Ryan in the chat corrected me. It's Angel Arc. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, they did that in this in the Next Generation episode where, where Picard and Crusher were connected. Yeah, that was like a mental connection, though, wasn't well, it? Might as well be. I mean, it's all it's all magic, right? It's all it's some future tech will take care of it. <laughs> I mean, we're the all talking about require. Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, plot required. You know, it's funny speaking speaking of um, things that you you recognize from the other shows, the other sci-fi shows. Did anyone else catch? What was it called? The Dread Harvest that the Omec do? Or, or the <laughs> that is so the Wraith. I mean, the, the Wraith from, from Stargate. Where they go and they capture their, their thousands of Votans and stuff and they collect them. It's like, it's like the darts coming down and scooping them up. 
I dropped a dinner, dread harvest in the bowl this morning, and it was oh just my terrible. gosh. <laughs> Do you ever have one of those ones that's just so big you can't believe it'll flush afterwards? <laughs> How did we get there from what All else? right. If you have problems with that, email Turd Ferguson at TurdFerguson. Gunnagy.com. <laughs> oh, my I'm gosh. I'm talking about the OMEC, and you turn it into turds. I don't understand that. Dread Harvest. You guys don't get that between that and poop? No. Seriously. How do your brains work? I'm thinking Ray. <laughs> normally. Our brains work <laughs> normally. Normally, yes. We're normal people. You, on the other hand, I... I genius! I, I Kayla, she'll tell you. Can't even label you. Teddy's a genius. See, we're normal. We need Bluetooth for the brain. <laughs> that was a great line. You're adorable. That was so cute. She crushes so hard on Amanda. I know. Mandy and I have this bet. If you go both ways to Kinsey, I was like, whoa, you actually said that. Doc, you for the win. I know. <laughs> and don't think for one second that Yule hasn't double crossed the double crossing Kenzie. Oh, I'm hoping so. I'm hoping. I'm. <sighs> oh, I, that, I that reminded so. me another uh, of another Star Trek. It reminded me of Data when she's from Star Trek when she's like slicing into the back of her neck and then she closes it back up. Reminded me of Matrix. Oh, that too. Yeah, a little bit. Boot me up, up. Exactly. This was a great episode. What purpose does Samir have? Why did they even bring him on the show? What's going on with that? <laughs> To be a red shirt? I guess. I mean, why do you need a veterinarian in case the hell bugs suddenly develop an illness? I mean, why? I don't get it. We don't know yet. Obviously. Maybe he's a frog lover and him and... <laughs> there was a pretty Yule. good shot of the frog. This there was a good shot episode. of the frog. I'm telling you. I can't wait for him to like start hitting on her. She's like, no, that's my boyfriend over there. And then the camera pans to the frog. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's already crushing on Amanda. What's the frog's name? Mandy? Kermit? <laughs> Come on, Sean. C give me a good name for the frog. Oh, no. Kermit's pretty good. I was going to go with Clarence. Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> Suncast in chat says, totally agree with you. Yeah, somebody agrees with me. I didn't understand why he just didn't get killed off last week. They seem to be giving him a bigger role. Yeah, except for when it was time for him to do something. He's like, <laughs> step up or stand out of the way. I'll I, just stand over here. I, I once did a brain operation on a cat. It lived for about a year and a half. I'll okay. take it. Get her cart. <laughs> it's. Let me tell you, as a professional who who's who works in law enforcement, it's it's so hard for me to watch them try to do CPR and when they're like barely pressing into the <laughs> the chest. I was like, come on, make it look more real. They need. That's it. what you got. Yes, that's what I got out. That's of it. where you got. And you blame me for my poop dread harvest jokes, and you're got like <laughs> the CPR is look, not regulation and yes, real. Yes, because you're talking about poop. That is entertainment gold. Poopinger's no longer with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness for that. Poopinger has left the building. You put about six rounds in a gravity bomb in there. Yeah, I'm guessing a singularity, no yeah. We, we technically did not see the body. We saw his skeleton <laughs> and his face melt off. He was but terminated. we didn't see the body. Terminated. You saw the, the, the bio man pretty. <laughs> pretty as his face is being blown up. There's three bio men that are out there with a load of weapons just looking for a home. Which one got away? Well, which one she got away? Which uh, one died? Ringo died. So Ringo. The, the other three, George and John and what's the other Beatles name? I can't even remember. <laughs> George, John, Ringo, and... Star. There we go. I needed the Ringo to get what? to Star. No, Ringo and Star. Oh, yeah. ah, I forget. Ringo Star is his left. <laughs> Ringo, I, I pulled a beef clutch moment. I, I don't... I. It's not working. George, John, Ringo, and... No, Seriously, dude. It's not working. You're, you're scaring me. I, I'm not really a big Beatles fan, but all right. I was more of a Monkees fan. <laughs> George, John, Paul, Ringo. Paul. There we go. Paul McCartney. Holy, the, yeah, the, the whole, guy oh. that's still awesome. Yeah, right. <clears throat> all right. Gotcha. <laughs> D Davos, like, Paul McCartney, dude. Come, Come on. on. <laughs> Moving forward. <laughs> So there's three bio men in a couple of rollers rolling around with a bunch of weapons. No, they're going to need more than a roller. They can't fit all there together. Well, they don't have to be the Fab Four anymore. They could do it like Green Day. That's, that's only a three-person band. Genesis. Uh, even better. Look at that. <laughs> the Bengals. <laughs> the Bengals are a foursome. And no. <laughs> they're not anymore. <laughs> no. Come on. Don't Debbie, only, you only need a drum machine. You don't need Debbie anyway. Don't be dissing all my girls there. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who said three. Michael's not the logical Michael. one to get rid of is Debbie, because you could replace her with a drum machine. Shen is best desperately trying to fart. <laughs> she's, she's got her red <laughs> fart face on. That's, that's not, what I think of that. That's not, that's not what I was thinking, but, but <laughs> that sounds you, better. 
I give you this much greeting. Okay, Adina, uh, she's a lot freakier than I once thought. Yeah, I like her. I think she's a spy. Of course she's a spy. She's going to be like... She's spy. all grilling Stama. What do you, what do you, what do she you think is of Rom dating Romtok on the down low. I'm sure that's what it is. She's like, I like dangerous men. <laughs> well, that's she what had she this sounds like verbatim, by the way. ...thing from Alec last week, and then all of a sudden she's she jumped from Alec to Romtok. I'm like, well, what happened? And then, well, of course, Alec comes in, tries to kill Stama, so she's instantly probably like, <laughs> ooh, this is, this is the type of guy that I want. You get my beads all wet. <laughs> <laughs> the crystals that she stole from Stama. I'm telling you that that one, she is, she's bad news. She's going to die. It's it okay. would have been better if, if Daytech had been like, Adina, come here, and then just slit her throat. <laughs> because I think she has a role to play, and that role is going to be bad for the Tars. Okay. Adina or Treasure Doll, since we're doing. Oh, Treasure Doll, hands down. I mean, if, uh, if you're talking we, chicks that are bad for you, Treasure Doll is totally We have it. not seen the full Adina. If you're truly thinking that she is dating Rom Talk on the down low, she has got some evil in her. I don't think she's dating Rom Talk. Yeah, but Treasure Doll was cuter because she was like at least full of snugglies, but you knew she was going to try and kill you or somebody else you know very shortly. Worth snuggling? Yeah, oh, yeah, totally worth snuggling. I mean, and the stab wounds afterwards. Uh, no, Treasure Doll is totally And she worth gave it. a great performance at the end, so. I'm telling you. I'm, you know, <laughs> she felt better than anyone I've seen. Gravity does work, even See, on her. Treasure Doll leaves the show and the arc blows up. I think there's some correlation there. Hell yeah. <laughs> that and Christy dies. <laughs> In fact, everyone who's broadcast from her has pretty much died so far. Anyone who was a regular DJ for them, for the, uh, for the arch, has pretty much died. Mm hmm. Very All true. it takes is Alec. We just need to get rid of him, and then then we're like, I am, three for three. I am happy that Alec is actually coming into his own this season. I'm, I, I've been needing to see that scene with him for a long time because in the past, I'm like, eh, whatever, <laughs> I don't care if he's a richer. Well, he uh, had to do it, otherwise he would have died. I know, but last season he was. Oh, my hand hurts, or I, I'm, I don't want to kill Skeever. I mean, he was in, or let my let my girlfriend kill the Hellbugs for me. He was Skeever. a wimp last season. Skeever. So, <laughs> I rewatched that scene. He's like, he Skeever's he like, come him. on, of everything I've done for you and your family, come on. And you say, okay, I'll give you an extra day or whatever it was. And So he's not taking anything more lip from his mama no more. That's good. Yeah, he's got the crazy eyes now. That's good. He's got the family crazy eyes, which is what he needed. Well, he was raised that way. He might might as well see it show up eventually. Yeah, although you know he can't kill Stama. See, what he should have done is just slit Adina's throat just to just to let these <laughs> these families know <laughs> that he, he means business. <laughs> you just want to kill him. You know what? Adina is probably dating CCBB. That's what's going on. <laughs> And they're both going to get caught. CCPB is trading up if that's the case, because CCPB is, that's not really his level, man. I mean, <laughs> that's, he is traded up. Just, you just hold on to that, because that's about as good as you're going to get there, CCPB. <laughs> uh, all right. Do you guys have anything else for the episode here? We have lots of things for the episode. Yeah, go shoot. Jamie. <laughs> Jamie. I called her, like, the, because uh, Shannon had to work during the. You called uh, Jamie? The, Y yes. Yes, please do call Jamie. <laughs> call Jamie. Uh, I called Shannon when uh, when the episode was live airing, and then right after uh, uh, she got home from work, I'm like, "So, did you see the episode?" She goes, "I saw the only important part of the episode." <laughs> I'm like, "What?" She goes, a "I couple, saw the a couple times." <laughs> I only saw I saw the most important part of the episode, which is the Jamie scene. I'm Dude, like, I had a fire alarm go off right in the middle of that episode. <laughs> She's like, that's the all that I cared about. That's, that's Forget it. that Conrad Coates was in the scene, too. Oh, I just... Yeah, I saw that. Dude, let I me mean, just say this now. He's never been in the scene for me. He's the stunt junk. That's what he is. <laughs> he's the stunt junk for Shannon. I've never seen him there. <laughs> he's like, purple what? I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> he's a prop holding her up. So I'm surprised, you know, after that scene that there aren't just a mess of pink, right? Because all her white makeup and all his purple makeup. I told you that's how the human race was built. <laughs> From Velociraptor purple ooze. And It'd then be more like lilac color now. I don't know. You know it, depends on, it depends on how you mix it. Okay, other than the wonderful Stama that we saw, what else you got for the episode? <laughs> well, we didn't see the face of the Von Bot guy that showed up at the camp. So I'm wondering who what kind of role he's going to play. Is that going to be our new guest that we have coming on the show? He's a sex toy distributor, uh, Justin from Von Bach, <laughs> and uh, he is there to do the uh, pancakes. Rom Talk was not 
Did you get the line that he was talking about? The movie? The 1982 movie, The Little Shop of Horrors. Did you hear that? Oh, what? yeah. Well, he's going to go see if, Aud- if, if, the, if the carnivore is going to kill Audrey. You missed a movie quote. I missed a movie quote. That's horrible. You did. I know. So, Suncast in the chat said, the end of the episode where Nolan and Orissa were on the roof talking was sad, but shot so beautifully. And it was. It was. I wonder what is actually behind there, because you know it's a bunch of green screen, but I, it, it was beautifully shot. And they were like, oh, we're going to go our separate ways. And that's what I was saying. Arissa was set to go meet up with Kenya clone, and they were going to live happily ever after. See, all these people have to do is go meet up with Kenya clone in Angel Arc, and they'll be fine. They just got to make it there. Quentin didn't. Arissa didn't. I mean... It's all bad no, news what you there. need to do is go make an honest woman out of Berlin and take her out of this damn town and love her forever. That's what you need to do. But before you do that, you need to spend about two hours and survive it with Kinsey. <laughs> and that would pretty much make my bucket survive list. Survive it. <laughs> it is the key to the benefit program. I'm just saying. <laughs> but, there you know, some benefits. That, would, that would pretty much make my bucket list of defiance. Because I think uh, Arissa at this point is uh, also a basket full of crazy. Uh, so what we're... Uh, I, I would just say... Find a Berlin, care and cherish her for the rest of her days, and move her the hell out of defiance. And then that is the best recipe for being happy in defiance. You see the look on her face. Crap, she's not where I left her to die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did you know she was here? Never mind that now. Uh, Never mind no, that. <laughs> just help me find her. Let's follow the blood trails that... I have no idea how she got those. I don't know where she... Oh, I walked right lessons. to her. <laughs> I think they're going to end up to be best buds because... Berlin's going to find out that Sisters. Nolan is the one who screwed her up to begin with. And then just. I don't think so. I, I really, really, really hope that Berlin makes it to the end of the season. I love Berlin. She just needs more snuggles. That's all she needs. Yeah. She's had a tough time. Well, you, you got Kenzie. Le- leave me with Anna Banana. Yeah, Kenzie, good. You just have to survive for a little while, but Kenzie's good. Good luck with that, man. That is the, I seriously, that is the most beautiful woman on the show. Because even if you shoot her twice, she still lives. I just means she's vivacious. <laughs> yeah, it means she's going to outlast you. And I don't mean I'm fine with like in bed. I mean like in life. Like with oh, I'm still your, fine your with heartbeat. That. Yeah, but you'd be happy the entire rest of the time. The entire 15 seconds? Yeah. Yeah, whatever it is, you, you could honestly say you'll be happy for the rest of your life, and that's what counts. You don't mind giving little nibbles now and then? Nah, nibbles is good. It's the chunks that worry me. <laughs> well, it depends on where she starts, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> All don't right, you too. Too much too soon. What else you got? <sighs> I don't. I can't think of anything. Yeah, else. we got past Jamie straddling the stunt junk, and now you're done, right? <laughs> you know, I got a feel for her though, because I remember her talking last episode about how long it took to get out of that. Painted on bathing suit, basically. That must hurt coming off the skin. I, but it looks nice. <laughs> it looks nice. <laughs> so you next- know it had to be a good episode when Shannon starts cruising through all her pictures from Spartacus. The, the yeah. like, five minutes after the episode, she's just like, look at this Spartacus shot. They framed it just like this. And look at this Spartacus <laughs> shot. It's the most skin we've seen of Jamie since Spartacus. Yeah, that's true. The only thing I have against this episode is sci-fi airing it on July 3rd. I think they should have waited a week. I, I really do. Because this was... What, do you think people missed it? it That's yeah. That's what these are for, though. I know. And in their Live Plus 7 ratings, as we discussed earlier, are great. But yeah, I think that they should have taken the weekend off. I, I Seriously, do. I mean, I don't know, man. That's what DVRs are for. I mean, and it's not affecting us doing it on July 5th or something like that for the dozen or people who, who listen to our show. So it's And it's people fine. are going to do exactly what I did, where I had to work. So I came home and I watched it. Yeah, it's fine. I, I I think people are past that. You know, the I guess. Like, I mean, I'm in Antarctica, so it's a little bit different for me. But you know, that's the whole purpose of having the live plus seven or live plus three is for the people who can't make it on the night of. Yeah, but you're in Antarctica in July. What is it? About fifty degrees there? <laughs> Actually the air conditioning is on. So <gasps> in Minnesota the air conditioning do you even have air conditioning? What's air conditioning? A fan? No, there's full blown air. It gets humid here. It's like ten thousand lakes, man. There's a lot of water in the air. You're in Minnesota at the moment. I know. I'm in Antarctica. I don't know what Sean's talking about. <laughs> Minnesota. I don't know. It's just, visually, it's no different. I have no anymore. idea where Minnesota is. Uta. Minnesota. Who? Don't you know? You, you betcha. <laughs> All right, next week is episode six, where the apples fell. Hopefully, we'll have some more ratings information for you. Yeah, apples is good. It's nice. 
I mean, grapes. Purples. Plums. No, I'm not talking about the purple plums. No, plums. I'm not talking about those. <laughs> Whose purple plums are we talking about? <laughs> it's fruit metaphors all week, next week on Voices of Defiance. All right, you guys ready for a network promo? Because I'm so ready for a network promo. Because oh, yes. I think he's done a <laughs> My plums are a Twitter. <laughs> So we're part of a network. It's called Gunned Geek. You can find it at gunnedgeek.com. And one of the other podcasts, there's like a billion of them, not 15, whatever. But one of the other podcasts is called Art House Legends. And what they do is they take a deeper look into the theatrical legendary films. Doesn't necessarily have to be sci-fi, but any film out there that is just, you know, one of the best of the past hundred years of film or whatever. And they've started their summer stint right now with the Terminator Terminator 2 Judgment Day so they kicked it off and they talked about the double feature which I you know what I was thinking about this I don't think you can watch Terminator without Terminator 2 these days because you gotta have them bang bang uh, yeah yeah, it is definitely the, the T2 is the best of the T series that I've seen thus far right although I really did like the blonde chick in T3 and I know that's blasphemy but still well, who didn't? She was yummy. It definitely. So they discuss the Terminator as a horror movie villain hero, the franchise anchor, while frequently veering into the critique of the other entries in the Terminator saga and finally pitching our dream Terminator sequels. Enjoy. And of course, our lady Pilar, who is still around because we have not seen a body. That's right. Exactly. Linda Hamilton will be seen in both those movies. So if you like Linda, you should check those out. Especially T2, because uh, in my personal opinion, that is the sexiest and the most badass that Linda Hamilton has ever appeared on film. How's your knee, T2. Doc? <laughs> oh, man. How's the knee? Oh, man. Was she bad? I had such a thing for Linda Hamilton after that movie. I still do. She's just. Amazing. And she's got super sci-fi cred. So, I mean, her and Sigourney Weaver and a couple of the others really are the big the screen women of sci -fi. queens of sci-fi. And she is just amazing. So, yeah, you guys need to check that out if you already haven't. People under 25, go watch those movies. <laughs> People. Somebody oh, still probably needs to watch Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, I know. Nicole, if you're listening. Nicole, Star Wars, girl. <laughs> Star Wars. Got to watch the Star Wars. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, go ahead and tweet Nicole and tell her to watch Star Wars. I want to see like a hundred tweets to her to go watch Star Wars. I, I just, I just want to go to her into it because she's got what five months left as of right now before Star Wars comes out. She's got some time to catch up. She got a little. She got a little. I think it'll be, and I think the Disney version of Star Wars will be kind of the the. Because uh, you if need I, to start with the original. Man. If Star Wars Rebels is any indication of awesome. what Disney can do with a, the Star Wars saga, then this is going to be the one that I think we all wanted when the the last three came out. I think this is this is an exciting time uh, to be a Star Wars fan, and I am I am super happy as Disney he's sitting here bouncing in his chair. I I really I I am excited. I am excited. I haven't been this excited about a movie since. God, uh, the second Matrix came out. You should have seen seen him on Father's Day. We took him to an arcade, and him and Michaela were playing the Star Wars game. Yeah, it was the 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 big one that's a surround sound pod, and you kind of sit in it, and it puts you at Yavin or at the snow speeder stuff and everything. And I have not felt like a, I'm forty year old man. I've not felt like a kid like that in decades. <laughs> You're bouncing the table. <laughs> I, I know. It was just freaking awesome. You know man. what, Sean? I'm going to call you on that. Uh, I know Mitch, you were very uh, much a Matrix fan. I, I get that. And I'll grant you that you were excited. But I think pre-actually seeing the movie, Transformers, you were probably more excited for Transformers before you saw the movie than you before were. Before I saw the movie, yes. I was... Well, Transformers was was. I mean, you can go right back to my childhood, and there's there's really three things that were that cool, um, or that that kind of helped form me into who I was. Star Wars was, of course, one of them. Star Trek was the other one, and Transformers. Transformers was was always that piece of my soul that was just cool. You know, it was just, and they taught you a whole bunch of kind of where you you start to learn about about uh, all kinds of stuff and. Before the movie, before you, I saw it or anything like that, I was just like, because it was Bumblebee and Optimus Prime and all these characters from my childhood that were going to come back to life. You know, you're so and, cute and you get excited about movies. Oh, it was it was cool. 
it was cool. And then you saw cute. it. I, I saw it and I was I, I was excited, excited that so I, got to, I got to see them again. But, you know, and then afterwards, they just got progressively worse. After <sighs> that. I'm telling you, Michael Bay, he, ah, I swore I would never see anything the man ever did again. And here I am watching The Last Ship and finding out again, I forgot it's a Michael Bay show. I'm like, ah, you got <laughs> yeah he does his fast cutting kind of thing really and his over complication of the transformers really kind of you know the 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 look of them the thing uh, with transformers is they're supposed to be about the character and that they are in many cases more human than humans and uh, he, he ruined it with fast cuts and action and everything which i think should have been a supporting thing not a the main crux of the of the enterprise so i don't know it was you know, we can go over it in some other time but it, it, but i will say yes that transformers was one of those things that i was just super stoked about but star wars man i'm excited i'm excited i hope and i'm not let down but i'm excited <laughs> i think uh, i mean disney themselves are saying they project uh, $250 million open uh, weekend, which is more, by the way, than even Jurassic World got, and they have the number one right now of 208. Uh, we talked it's about it before. It's difficult to go wrong with Chris Pratt and dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that is tough. That is tough to go. I need go. to see that movie. Oh, it is fantastic. I watched it on... Don't. <laughs> I watched it on something. He watched, was, it. he watched it. He watched it. He watched it on IMAX, right? IMAX uh, 3D? Yeah. Yeah, that was totally it. It wasn't something that rhymes with Bodhi at all. <laughs> But yeah, I did. I did watch it, and it was it was amazing. Awesome. Well, definitely, I can't wait to go see that or Star Wars. So that will be fun. <gasps> hey, we didn't get a voicemail, but we did get some feedback this week from Christopher on Facebook again. He said, "Well, happy to see Alec find his inner Daytech, especially the look in his eyes in the final scene. Looking forward to Doc's dynamic with her new physician's assistant." Hubba hubba. Pretty sure we know who tax spy and defiance is, or just a really bad case of girl fan crush that can't be filled in a world without social media. Oh. And in closing, I like Pappy Daytech. Maybe the Tar and Macaulay genes will produce a true badass. Absolutely. Hey, if you're Bear, Lukey, Lukey Bear, whatever you want to call him, <laughs> you're destined for greatness in this world, as long as you can survive. I love that scene at the end. Well, at least we know the, the wee one's name. <laughs> They take out awesome lines. Yeah. Okay. On Twitter, of course, we have a bunch of tweets back and forth all week long. It's fun interacting with you guys. Mostly it's Shannon. I'll, I'll admit, mostly it's Shannon. I'll throw her under the bus. Beep, beep, beep. But it's me. It's yeah. me. Yeah. Shannon is a social queen. I'm a hermit. Hey, it's hard tweeting from both accounts. Oh, <laughs> oh, two accounts. Oh, oh, so cute. Some of us have access to a lot more than two. I was going to say, I have seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to count them right now. <clears throat> Got to open up the app first. So, what do you use? Hootsuite? Yeah, it's just the Twitter app. Oh, on, okay. On my phone. And let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, you seven, use the Twitter eight, app on your phone? nine. Oh, man. He's got me beat. <laughs> I thought I had a bunch at seven. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 total. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'll take the video, do that. <laughs> <laughs> That is why you're hearing mostly from Shannon of Voices of Defiance, although I t uh, chime in once in a while. But we got one that kind of confused me a little bit. Apparently, there's a prop gag going on that I don't know about in the show, the I Am The Log. Tell oh, me. yeah, that's been going on all se all, all season long. So it's no one, It's a mystery. No one knows who it is. So they tweet pictures from, they post pictures from the set, from behind the scenes. Um, with different people holding the log. Yeah, I did see different pictures of where the log was in different scenes. It was even down in the um, in the now destructed. Uh, th see, that's how I know that the three biomen got away because the log had to get away somehow. <laughs> and Do you see how good I'm being not making log jokes? <laughs> Do you see how good I'm being? Okay, Turd Ferguson. Don't you worry, it's a development later in the season. So we'll find out. And we also will find out how the Omex still know English because we just, we know about the arc tech in their brains, but we don't know how it's been used or anything like they that. They learned it from the log. <laughs> there you go. It's the log. All right. Come so, forth, all ye Omex, for I am the log. <laughs> I am the only log. You will have no other logs before me. You return. <laughs> you shall drop no other logs without me. 
For I am the Lord. Oh, God. Stop Remind me never, me never, ever to give you a vacation again. Okay. <laughs> If you haven't found out yet, uh, follow our Twitter account. You will have access to the clamors that come out. They're little 18 second bit audios. And as you just heard from Sean, that will probably be going on clamor at some point in time. All you children of the log, log on. <laughs> go, go to your clamor app. Or if you just want to listen to our clamors, you can catch us on our, the Twitter feed at voices. O defiance. Why? O? because they wouldn't give me one more letter to create voices of defiance. The log is a cruel and harsh mistress. <laughs> it's Twitter. It's not the log. So all is the log. <laughs> oh man! All day long, I'm going to hear this. <laughs> or you can hear the clamors from the Gunna Geek Twitter account, and that is at Gunna Geek. So I just want to say thank you very much for listening. Thank you to everybody in the chat room for coming out. This was a makeshift podcast. I am indeed not in my studio. I am on the road in Antarctica, <laughs> and. He is on the log. No, no, I'm on a chair. <laughs> Although pretty soon I will be because I got to go cut down a tree. So anyway, a thank log. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening. Thank you for paying attention to the log. And next week, as I mentioned before, we will listen to episode six, where the apples fell and come back to you with all of our log spottings. Oops. So until next week. <laughs> My plums are a Twitter. <laughs> About the log? <laughs> the log is amused. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for stopping by. We'll see you next week. Bye. I must go drop a log. <laughs> <laughs>Thanks for listening to Voices of Defiance. If you want to get in touch with us, you can catch us on Twitter at Voices O Defiance. Email us at feedback at voicesofdefiance.com. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash voicesofdefiance. Swing by our website, www.voicesofdefiance.com. Or send us a voicemail at area code 612-888-ARC1. That's 612-888-2751. This podcast is not affiliated with Sci-Fi, the television show Defiance, or the Tryon video game Defiance. Music titled After the Apocalypse by Snishnook and Rocket Easy by Sound Road can be found on Pond5.com. Catch you next time and watch out for those hellbugs. Good morning. No. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, step number one. Actually, step number two. Step number one is me hearing you. Is step number three Shannon, or is she not joining us this morning? No, she's making terrible noises at the door, so I'm guessing she's manhandling the block that uh, holds it shut. Because for some reason, after a year of doing it, she still can't get it without going... <laughs> I didn't hear any of that, except for you going... Do you like that meme that I posted? Did you see it? Uh, No, I haven't. Nobody pays any attention to anything. Come on. No, no, no. I've just been... Defy Down Under, my friend Libby. She made it for us. Nice. Based off of, based off of a um, comment that we made, I think, two pa two podcasts ago, where you were talking about pantless podcasts. I put it on Twitter. I'm not wearing any pants now. See? It's a good thing she made it. Well, I'm not wearing pants, but I am wearing stuff. You're wearing the Zardos sling? Man, uh, uh, I don't think the female population of the planet could take it if I wore Zardos. Get up. I don't think the male population of this planet Thigh would take highs it. Thigh highs and a nut slinger? Oh, let me tell you. You know that in purple. All right, I'm going to look purple. Up. Did you post it as Voices Defiance? Yes. Okay, pantsless podcasting in style. <laughs> Alec. <laughs> I figured it'd be fitting since, fitting, <laughs> fitting since he followed us. <sighs> he did, he did, and he is, he is rocking. All right, we're going to try to go live on Mixler here. We'll see. No idea. This will work. Go. Go, go, Gadget Mixler. What category? Whatever. It's talk. It's not eclectic. I don't know. I'm pretty eclectic. Well, yeah, you are. Can you hear us now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> what was that? Was it Sprint? Or was that AT&T commercial? Remember a long time ago with the guy walking around with the monkeys? I...
Hey, hey, so, we're the monkeys. I'm so easily People entertained. That commercial, I laugh so hard every time the commercial came through. Fitz has a monkey. His name is Henry. You need to read the comics. Shield number one. He has yeah, a monkey. Yeah, Shannon's going to read the comics. Probably yeah, not. you know, like Fitz always wants a monkey. He's got a monkey in the comics. His name is Shannon Fitz. has always wanted a monkey as well. For our Her. first 10 years He's, we were married, she's like, can I have a monkey? <laughs> oh, because <laughs> of friends. <laughs> because of friends. You were watching Friends. I, I did not watch Friends, no. Yeah. I'm not a Friends kind of gal. I watched The X-Files <clears throat> when Friends was on. All right, let's get this over with so I can go cut down a tree. I wanted a monkey and then you gave me a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the difference? Which is about the same thing, really. <laughs> I've got a six-year-old nephew that's about the same here. All right, there will be no music. Are you guys ready? Hit it. We're live in three. Well, we're already live, but we're going to start in three, two, Happy Arc Fall Day! Hello, I'm your host, Stargate coming... Hello, I'm your host, Stargate Pioneer, coming from... Ah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's all right, Shannon ripped one in the podcast room here, and she's basically... Open the window, open the window, the open the window! Room. Okay, here we you go. deserve it. <laughs> I do not deserve it. You need to just start, stop drinking those damn Kickstarter. Oh, don't blow it over here. Oh, <laughs> God. What is in your ass that makes it smell like that? Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> you were there. Oh, oh and now right, I'm sorry, dude. Go ahead. Hey, Mixer folks. Thanks for stopping by. Really appreciate you. Mm. Thanks for stopping by the chat room, guys. Really we give appreciate- you this much log. Where was the log in the Tevkin Stelma scene? <laughs> Dave, Dave was like, please go. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see you guys we, next week. <laughs> we know where the log was. We know where the log's been. Log is in my booty. The log's been in Stelma. <laughs> <laughs> that's the purple. That's the purple log. That's different. She's eating the purple people. <laughs> She's the eater. <laughs> she gobbles it up. She gobbles his dread harvest. <laughs> 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 if they got Kinsey, it'd be two girls in a log. <laughs> I bet right. you've never seen a dread harvest this size before. <laughs> Sorry, SP. <laughs> oh man, you were torturing me trying to make me choose between Catherine, Amanda, and Jamie. I know. That's awesome. There's been points in my life where all three of them have featured in your fantasies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only other one we're missing is Micah. Oh, Joey. I was going to say, Micah trumps all three of them for you, doesn't she? Does. She does. Yeah. Honestly, she does. She's pretty cool. I wonder what she's like in person. I've never seen a panel of her. Or I have never seen like any like serious Who? videos of her Joanne? or anything. Like, yeah, she she's on panels at Comic Con. I don't know. I haven't seen any. of She her. drops the f word every other word. Good. Uh, so That's like awesome. Chloe. No, she's Ming-Nan? sassy. Who is? There's one. Oh, uh, Jillian Anderson. Oh my God, I've never heard so many f bombs. Oh yeah, yeah. That 